Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Science Faction. The only show where a scientist, a comedian, and a comedian scientist come together to discuss science. Comedically. Hello, and welcome to Science Faction's Patreon, episode 72. I call be yes. That is right. I am trotted out. I am let out of my gimp box to stretch my legs. And then after defeating you or possibly a scientist, if you're going to really throw things in the a wrench mm. and things today, uh, mm-hmm. then I do the Russell Crowe, are you not entertained speech? And then I uh, confidently, uh, uh, with a perfect score, am escorted back to my gimp box. That's interesting. Uh, if I didn't realize throw a wrench in. I had to use that term to mean like to mess up as opposed to uh-huh. completely uh-huh. lie about what you were talking about. Interesting. Interesting. I'm going to beat you to death with a wrench. <laughs> you know what's funny, Damien, is uh, you asked last week, uh, hey, you know, can I hear from some of the people out there who are saying, you know, about, about the, these hints being too easy and stuff? And I didn't even have to say anything. They started posting on our Patreon page. Damien, you saw, and then I copied some of, over to our, our Facebook page of, of fans being like, he's just giving the answers away. This isn't fun anymore. You know, Damien, I'm checking come your on. Facebook page now. Um, Please um, do. This is this will not stand. Please do. I'm I'm surprised you missed it. <laughs> also, uh, Damien, if you can't see, it's because you're blocked uh, on the page. I don't see it, Bobby, and I know full well that you don't know how to use social media. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's it's, uh, it's there. You gotta. It's on the dark web. It's on. It's on. Uh, what, what's that? Um, Truth Social. It's on that Trump social media site. And our post reached a lot of people. This is one of our most engaged, engaging posts of the year, Damien. So the post says, we're getting a lot of good feedback on new shirts, but fans seem to think the clues for I Call BS are too easy. And then I posted some of the quotes we were getting on our Patreon. Aaron O'Donnell says, clues, laugh out loud. Bobby's just giving away the answers. And Aaron O'Donnell, we did time together. This is a betrayal. We spent time in sublock D. Are you going to stab me in the back like that? Uh, Superfan Dwayne writes, Congrats, Damien. Back on the winning streak. Those clues are making all the difference. I'm your AA sponsor, Dwayne Donovan. Are you going to do me dirty like this? Go ahead, get drunk. Go ahead, and shove that chip up your ass, Dwayne. And Andrew Lindsay commented, Now that's professionalism. You'd rather not earn money than have us listen to Damien's groveling for clues to win. Andrew has had a thing against me of jealousy ever since college. This <laughs> this one doesn't surprise me. Uh, yeah, Damien. So anyway, uh, at fans' requests, I will be abstaining from giving you clues on this particular one. Now, this is a test, Damien, because you have told me before, when you've been given oh. clues, you get them right. So <laughs> You're such a fucking liar. <laughs> You're such a... <laughs> I mean, I guess I am a liar. When when I give you clues, we get the answer right together. <laughs> mostly me. So when, when I get them, when I get them right, it's us. But when I get them wrong, it's me. No, nope, you you've only got them right when I gave you clues, though. <laughs> In fact, last week I believe you got three wrong when I stopped giving you when I started doing the clues after the after you gave your answer and I started doing the clues. Then you got three wrong right in a row. So I feel like I'm a cast member of Jackass. Like nothing's real and this is all a prank. This is all just I'm like at any point Donkey come is going to come raining down on my head. This is there's a non-zero chance of that. All right, audience, <laughs> let's move right on. To I call BS. I call. I call. I call. I call. I call. Ring, ring. I call BS. Yeah, my wife would sell me out. My wife would let you install a donkey cum tank above my head. If you were in the writer's room when they were pitching that Nickelodeon, like, award show series, <laughs> when you got slide, <laughs> that was the original version of it. Listen. I got a ton of donkey cum on the cheap, but we got to buy the, We got to buy in bulk and we got to pull the trigger now. <laughs> we got to use it, man. It's like gasoline in six months. This all turns to varnish. Like it's not going to be useful. <laughs> also super highly flammable. Weird yeah. fact about nature. Can't smoke around donkey cum. And if you, if you want to fuck up your fuel pump, just put some old donkey cum through it. That'll jack it up immediately. <laughs> all right. Article number one. A new paper out suggests that West African monkeypox may have recently become an STD in Europe and North America. Damien, is this science or bad science? I did read that they believe monkeypox was started with some sex. 
which tells me that Europe, in their egalitarianness, uh, have already achieved the Planet of the Apes future, where men and ape women casually engage in coitus. This has to be science. There has to be a dark side to that sweet ape love. Monkeypox science. Wow. Okay. It's an interesting form of reasoning there. And by the way, I'd like to point out, we've actually covered a story in which like a shaved orangutan was chained up and used as a prostitute. So I don't know that they're pioneering human ape sex, but that was that was that, that was, you know, this this was like a, a, a an ape, a, a young ape co-ed and a young human male meeting in college and and their love defying the odds. What you described is a truly horrific story of primate rape. Yeah. And also, like, I have seen uh, what a, an orangutan can do to a human. I would be terrified to put my penis, I mean, anywhere near a shaved orangutan. Good a God. female orangutans are pretty small. They're, like, less than half the size of the males and... You know, I'm just, I'm just, I, I'm trying to picture how, uh, what type of Walking Dead future, like how dire the straits have become. Yeah, that the guy who decided to tie up a female orangutan is like, and instead of admonishing him, people are like, "Hey, um, how much to hit that?" <laughs> <laughs> it's like, like, hey, can I use your pool? <laughs> Uh, Damien, this one is science and bizarre and interesting and terrifying. So just a reminder, monkey pox is related to smallpox and cowpox and the legendary rapper Tupac. And it's one of those <laughs> virus, uh, viral infections that essentially gets transmitted by touching either the, the person themselves, the sores, the pox that grow on their skin, or the fluids they release. So, like, if you were to lay in their bedding of, uh, that, that when they were sick, you get sick from that. But it's not like SARS-CoV-2 or anything where you can catch it from the air. This is not airborne. This has You have to physically come into contact with either the person's skin or the fluids from their skin. My aunt came in contact with Mr. Shakur's fluids um, backstage at a Coachella. Uh, she speaks highly of the event. Yeah, and Jada Pinkett nearly took her head off for it. <laughs> yeah, Will Smith came up and slapped my aunt. <laughs> Told her to keep Tupac's name out of her damn mouth. So this is an African virus, and it wasn't discovered until the 1950s, and it didn't, wasn't discovered in, in human population until the 1970s. It's a zoonotic transfer, meaning it comes over from animals, and it's, it's happened multiple times. It doesn't usually spread very far in people because, again, you have to come into close contact with that individual. So as long as you can kind of isolate and surround and vaccinate around that person, you can usually stop it. And monkeypox, is all, I mean, from the pictures I've seen, uh, is seems pretty drastic. Uh, people know yeah. to stay away from you if you have monkeypox. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I guess there could be some sexual advantages to certain bumps in certain places on penises if manufactured dildos are any indication. So, <laughs> you know, maybe it has a attractive as well as repelling effect, especially if, as we talked about in the main show, you're from Germany. I couldn't help but notice the ravishing monkey pucks uh, you were sporting earlier. Would you mind if I were to drop into your direct messages in the early a.m.? Now, some of these strains have as much as a 3 to 6% mortality rate in humans, though the one that we are seeing right now is closer to about 1%, so it's not nearly as big. And believe it or not, this is one of those rare diseases that could actually be more dangerous to healthy younger people than to older people, but not for the reason that we sometimes see where when you're like when you're younger, you have an immune rate overreaction. It's actually because it's related enough to smallpox that old people who got a vaccination for smallpox as a child still harbor some immunity and protection against monkeypox. Well, uh, I got the smallpox vaccination uh, vaccine in the army, so uh, I'm yeah. going to go uh, try to find me a shaved captive orangutan. Oh my god. <laughs> What's really interesting is there has been an outbreak. It, it started kind of small in Europe. It seems to have gotten bigger. It has spread to the U.S. and Canada with some endemic stuff going on in the Northeast, in New York City, in Canada, and, of course, in different parts of Europe. And we think it may be spreading as a sexually transmitted disease between men who have sex with men. So, I mean, would a condom fix monkeypox? Or is it like all the other touching that's happening? Like, is that's it like purely... A yeah, it's probably it probably would not um, kind of like when you say, well, a condom stop herpes and you're like, well, I guess if it covers the sore perfectly and no fluids come out and like you don't like it could, but probably not. What if I am wearing a latex bodysuit and that latex bodysuit is covered in peanut butter? 
Uh, dear. So let me read a quote from the article. So far, more than 100 cases have been reported across the world, with the majority of cases cropping up in Spain, Portugal, and the UK. There are also several cases tied to an outbreak near Montreal, Canada, and one case in New York City, and another in Massachusetts. Cases have been reported in Belgium, France, Germany, Italy, Sweden, and Austria. Many of the cases are in men ages 30 to 50 who have sex with men. So... Very, very, very interesting. I am interested to see how far this goes, whether or not we'll be able to get a handle on it, whether or not it becomes a major outbreak. Now, it's never going to be SARS-CoV-2 because there aren't people walking around breathing out that don't even know they have it getting other people infected. That's kind of a perfect storm scenario. We're not going to have that. But we very well could have the beginnings of a new STD where like monkeypox goes from being just like monkeypox to like, we'll call it dick pox or something, but like it, it becomes something else. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I got that one right. And uh, that should disprove your stupid uh, clue theory. So I think we're done. That's a sample size of what uh, that is 100% that I've gotten right without your fucking uh, clue help, which you've never. Can you please just level with the fans or uh -huh. admit to at least me that your clues were never clues and they never were meant to help and that you were a tyrant in this game. So what's interesting, Damien, is that I'm I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place. I got the uh -huh. fans telling me these clues are too easy. You're taking the fun out of this game. Stop coddling, Damien. And then I get you saying like, <laughs> I do sound like that. <laughs> I left one sobbing voicemail about this issue, and you've been holding it against me. Uh, it was 25 minutes long. All right, article number two. <laughs> Just pick up, Bobby. Pick up. Oh, God. Article number two. A new paper suggests we may have found the causal mechanism of and possible preventative treatment for schizophrenia and related disorders. Damien, is this science or bad science? This is bad science. Schizophrenia is still strong. I know that you, this would have been the title article. You would have used at least three Steve Nash jokes. In the, in the main story, so no, no, no. Uh, the curing and diagnosing schizophrenia, being that it is such a major problem and affects so many comedians that you know, uh, I am going to say that, uh, no, you wouldn't put that in the back pages as a, as a uh, B-side on the Patreon-only episode. I do sometimes, when talking about schizophrenia, uh, refer to basketball players from the late aughts. That is oftentimes... <laughs> Man, look at that passing. He's a real team player. <laughs> what other euphemisms do they use for white guys in the NBA? Helpful. He's a real gym rat. All his <laughs> fundamentals. <laughs> oh, dear. Sorry, Damien. This one is science and also incredibly interesting. By the way, it very well could have been the title article of the main show. There was this other interesting science coming out this week, so we just, we just got back put. So, uh, background on schizophrenia, we've talked about this a lot. So, this is a condition that is typified by disorganized thoughts uh, that oftentimes lead to major life issues, from homelessness to violence to being the victim of violence to not being able to hold down a job or live in a typical Western lifestyle. In a society. Yeah. And problem with schizophrenia is we can treat it kind of. We have some drugs, we have some therapies and stuff. But basically, if you're schizophrenic, you are schizophrenic. Your life will be different for the rest of your life. We are never like changing you back. And it is it is a life sentence to something that it can be terrifying and scary, not just for you, but your, for your family as well. It puts you at way bigger risk of getting shot by the cops or killed in a violent altercation or dying from a car accident or drug overdose. Like it, it, it is something that greatly impacts our society. Chances are, if you're outside and you see a homeless person ranting and raving and yelling at birds, it's likely a schizophrenic. Why? Because they know birds aren't real. Like that you could, <laughs> you could say whatever you want to a bird because you're talking to an inanimate object. It goes nowhere. If anything, they're the sanest people on the planet, Bobby. To be fair, I think birds are real. And I also say whatever the fuck I want to birds. <laughs> Cause what are they going to do? <laughs> Tell Bobby uh, talk shit to the wrong ostrich. Oh, uh, dear. So this new paper out indicates some neuropsychiatric conditions may be caused by specific activity in the thalamus during adolescence. 
really, really interesting. So I'm going to quote a couple of quotes from the article because I think it's important to get this right. So there's a little bit more quotes than usual on this one. They think this quote unquote holds promise for a more targeted therapeutic for schizophrenia and other brain disorders where cognitive dysfunction is related to altered prefrontal cortex function. Still in the quotes, the prefrontal cortex is an area of the brain responsible for executive functions such as planning, working memory, and impulse control. It has long been implicated in the pathophysiology of schizophrenia. The thalamus is a structure in the middle of the brain that regulates prefrontal cortex function in the adult. However, its role during adolescent development is elusive. To test how cortical gray matter may go awry in the disease, Laura Benoit, the first author and MD PhD graduate student at Columbia, manipulated the activity of thalamic neurons in the brain in the brains of mice during adolescence and examined how it affected prefrontal cortex functioning later in life. The scientists discovered that thalamic inhibition during adolescence led to adult deficits in attentional set shifting, a form of cognitive flexibility that's impaired in individuals with schizophrenia. Strikingly, excitation of the thalamus during adulthood reversed the cognitive deficit in mice with developmentally altered cortical function. So incredibly interesting. There was a bunch of stuff in there. I want to break it down. Basically, they took a bunch of mice by impacting the thalamus thalamus during adolescence, not as their adult, but as their brain is going through those formations during adolescence, they were able to basically induce schizophrenic-like conditions in adult mice. And even more crazy, they were able to reverse it by stimulating that thalamus. Super super interesting for many, many reasons. One is we know that schizophrenia is something that does come on later in life. In men, usually in their early 20s, women usually in the later 20s. And if it is something that could be stopped, you know, these these are people who are usually considered totally normal beforehand. But if it's something that we can intervene in and be like, oh shit, this person's thalamus is not pinging right, this could cause problems later on in life. Maybe we could use some transcranial recurrent stimulation or something to stimulate it to prevent that from happening and actually prevent schizophrenia in people who would otherwise develop it. What'll happen to our artists, Bobby? I mean, our American Actors Guild would be uh, I don't think the, there's the, a lot of schizophrenic actors. I think there's a lot of more. There's a, there may be some bipolar. Our jazz musicians or our, our yeah, I, 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 what do I, what's my stereotype? I, art. I mean, visual art. My, our visual artist, Bobby. Hey, we'll be fine. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're never going to have another dogs playing poker. <laughs> the artist was just uh, it was a schizophrenic, just trying to draw regular people playing poker. <laughs> <laughs> I drew the poker game that I was at last night. <laughs> But even more interesting is they were able to change the the non-functioning thalamus in those mice models back to a functioning one. Now, they induce the change, so who knows, maybe you can you can reverse an induced change but not a non-induced one. We're not we're not sure exactly how all the the math works on this, but that actually points to the possibility that we might actually be able to treat schizophrenia after it's already been discovered, which we can't do right now. Like again, you're schizophrenic, you're schizophrenic for life. That's it. Your life's going to be changed forever. What if we could actually bring those people back? Then I have to get a job? <laughs> Fuck that, man. I, I'm a European citizen. I am taken care of because I have a disability. How dare you take that from me? How weird would it be if, like, you were somebody who was schizophrenic for 20 years? Like, you were a normal person for the first 20 years of your life, then you were schizophrenic for 20 years, and then some somebody figured this out, and they flipped you back, and you're like, oh my god, what was I doing? Like, I wonder what that would be like to look back from a, a more sober, so to speak, point of view back on a schizophrenic life. What if uh, if you adapted to your schizophrenic life, and so you don't trust you don't trust the new world again. You don't trust everything again. This is another trick. I know that there's a dragon underneath this bus. <laughs> don't try to lie to me. I just wonder what that would be like if you, when you look back, would you be like, "Oh my god, I was that was crazy," or would you look back, seeing it through your own eyes at the time, and be like, "No, I made sense. I was definitely fighting dragons." <laughs> um, hey, thanks for bringing me back to the real world. I was in my own action movie, you piece of shit. My own fantasy action movie. Now I realize I'm just homeless. Thank you for bringing me back and reminding me of all this. Article number three. A new paper out details the use of small pinching sea spiders as intentional stitches to hold closed a wound. By bottlenosed dolphins. Damien, is this science? Or bad science? This is bad science. Uh, after uh, the bottlenose dolphin figured out how to use the blowfish as a bong, they have uh -huh. been very uninspired to uh, <laughs> use other sea life to uh, Flintstones their world. <laughs> uh, David, this is bad science, but you got it right for the exact wrong reason. <laughs> 
I'll, I'll tell you why in a second. By the way, I got the idea from human hunter gatherer groups. They will use pinching ants as stitches. They will like literally get the put the ants near an open wound, get the ants to pinch down, and then they'll twist their heads off and they use them as impromptu stitches. So that's where I got the uh, the notion from. But uh, the reason you are wrong, Damien, is they did find out that a group that a specific group of bottlenose dolphins rub up against specific species of coral that may be providing antibiotic or skin-soothing impacts. The dolphins appear to line up and wait their turn to rub their bodies against these coral, but only a very few specific ones out of a big old coral reef, they will only go for very, very specific ones. The ones they go for actually produce antibacterial components as well as other antioxidant or hormonal properties And the dolphins, when they push up against these things, are releasing those chemicals and those substances onto their own skin. It's not thought that they're necessarily doing this to, like, heal wounds, because we're not seeing wounds when they're doing this. But this might be a basically a skin treatment that they realize works to keep your skin healthy and bacteria free. So uh, if we see a dolphin and they're doing this or, or, or pick any species that we've talked about where they've found a way to utilize their environment as some medical thing. Yeah. Do, if you're an alien and you come to Earth in like the 1700s, yeah, when you watch a human apply leeches and mercury to a wound, are they are they thinking, well, clearly there's some natural agent that they're using, or are are we the only species that actively we're, we're too smart for our own good? We weren't doing anything that we weren't rubbing up against an antibiotic coral. We were actively yeah. killing ourselves. Well, you're kind of bringing up an interesting bigger question, which is, is it possible that like dolphins or cetaceans or any of those groups could have like superstitions, right? Like, is there possible they could have a non-cause effect habit that they do because they have some internal model of the world in which they are supposed to do that thing, but it doesn't confer a benefit? Dolphin Jesus demands that I, I I don't know, dolphins rape a lot, so I don't think that there is a dolphin Jesus. Um... But hey, you know, so do humans. And there is a human Jesus. Oh, well, I mean, we'd say there's a human Jesus. <laughs> the problem with Dolphin Jesus is if he did his main trick of like turning the water he was touching into wine, he would instantly kill all of sea life. <laughs> but humans would fucking love it, right? Like if Dolphin Jesus turned all of the world's oceans suddenly into red wine. <laughs> On the plus side, he could single handedly solve, like, I think a lot of the uh, overfishing things. Just by recreating a lot of fish. He has access to fish that he could make into more fish. Uh, so they were only doing this with gargonian coals, leather coals, and a type of sea sponge that all produces this. Very interesting. They literally line up and wait one by one for each one to do this. So it, it seems like it might be conferring some benefit to them. Maybe even there's some analgesic properties that it feels good on their skin or, or it takes away some pain. All right. And lastly, article number four. A new study out of the UK suggests that eating a cup of cranberries a day can significantly improve subjects' memory, decrease bad cholesterol, and improve neural function. Damien, is this science or bad science? This is bad science. Eating a bunch of cranberries every day mixed with tea is a great way to get your semen to taste British. Like, yes, (laughs) you know, every semen, like uh, just as an island population that snacks mostly on pineapple, their semen will have a general flavor to it. Yes. British semen, like if like if we're doing like a Pepsi taste test and I have semen, cups of semen from all around the world, I'm telling you, cranberries and tea, bam, I, I'll pick out a British cup of cum like that. Wow. Wow. I didn't realize like Britain and cranberries were so synonymous. Uh, it, it's, it, you know, uh, the cranberry universally thought of as the shittiest fruit is actually the sweetest thing in all of Britain. Oh, dude, you cannot call the cranberry the shittiest fruit. There is so many more. The Duran. The yeah, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of stuff like that. Cran- cranberry is the, is the shittiest fruit that I can't believe people still juice and sell a product of juice. Uh, Damien, uh, this one is... Science, meaning you only got 50-50, no better than chance, also as you have called it, the Hitler score. I I didn't. I went back in time to try and I went back in time to try to prevent you from creating this game and I actually ended up creating Hitler, who now exists in this timeline now. That is how we got the Hitler score. Hit who? <laughs> That's right, Bobby's not from this timeline. He doesn't. I was just always confused when you kept saying the Hitler score. I thought it like was some kind of weird reference I didn't get. Thought it was a baseball rule or something. I didn't know. 
Oh, uh, dear. Okay, so this is science, though two caveats, and they are pretty big caveats. These are in older people over 50 facing neural decline already, so I'm not sure this would impact young, healthy people in the same way. And number two, this whole study was sponsored by the Cranberry Institute, which is either a group of cranberry-aligned business interests or a <laughs> secret society dedicated to eliminating UTIs. <laughs> I was going to say it, it was a dandy British superhero team. <laughs> oh, with the Cranberry Institute, I am Captain Wales. I don't really have many stereotypes. Why is it? Why have you decided to associate England and cranberries? And have I, have I missed something? I don't. I just okay. I think it's. I think it's. I think uh, I associate cranberries with New England. Okay, that's it. <laughs> this is how this train of logic has gone through. Yes. And New Englanders are the British people of Americans. I got so. it. I got it. <laughs> the cranberry is an old world fruit. I associate cranberries with uh, urinary tract infections in women. And so I would have associated it nationally with Mongolia because I feel just like the amount of bareback horse riding there, they're just going to have more UTIs. Like, I just think that's that's a likelihood. UTIs and Hyman snapping. That's the sound of Mongolia. Also the name of our high school band. Hyman snapping. It was Jaime. Jaime snapping. And it was an acapella group uh, where, where we covered Latin American's uh, uh, popular pop songs. We were doing Selena. Hyman <laughs> uh, <laughs> snapping. Yeah, also a good porn name. <laughs> Sounds like something Randy Macho Man Savage would sell. Snap into a hymen snap. Oh, I don't know. That's we've gone a long way. Your father liked hymen snapping. Your father worked with hymen snapping, <laughs> but your father never trusted hymen snapping. <laughs> the only other person ever named hymen, hymen Roth. My wife has not seen The Godfather, so that would be lost on her. But to <laughs> any other uh, cinema files. <laughs> Oh, dear. So past studies have shown that higher dietary flavonoid intake is associated with lower rates of cognitive decline and dementia and foods rich in anthocyanins and proanthocyanins, which give berries their red, blue and purple color, have been found to improve cognition. That's all a quote, by the way. This continues. Cranberries are rich in these micronutrients and have been recognized for the antioxidant and inflammatory properties. Now, a couple of other issues. Small N size, N is only 60 in this. Again, all older people. It was a short study, only 12 weeks, and they each had either 100 milligrams of dried powdered cranberries or a placebo. And I wanted to know what they use for the placebo. Because, like, I've never had... Ground up penis? Like, something yeah, of equal like when, taste? Like, if you pick some another berry, wouldn't those also have flavonoids? Because you just said that those were in... That they gave red, blue berries and stuff their color. Like, so did you not pick a berry? And then if you didn't pick a berry, is there anything you would eat? Like, did they just use Starburst? Like, what? <laughs> yes, we use yellow Starburst. They're... Britain's favorite Starburst, the yellow one. Uh, once again, quoting from the article, we found that the participants who consumed the cranberry powder showed significantly improved episodic memory performance in combination with improved circulation of essential nutrients such as oxygen and glucose to important parts of the brain that support cognition, specifically memory consolidation and retrieval. The cranberry group also exhibited significant decrease in LDL or bad cholesterol levels known to contribute to atherosclerosis, the thickening or hardening of the arteries caused by a buildup of plaque in the inner lining of an artery. This supports the idea that cranberries can improve vascular health and may in part contribute to improvement in brain perfusion and cognition. End quote. Now, I'm going to go ahead and say this. Anything they say needs to be followed up by an independently funded study with really good research design. Because anytime the Cranberry Institute is like, we're going to do a double-blinded study. Here, eat this cranberries. And you guys don't eat this cranberries. And we'll just assume you don't know the difference. And look, we found results. It's like, yeah, but... I don't know that you blinded cranberries properly. I don't trust you guys. Like, again, I don't know if you're just like a, a secret society that's bent on stopping UTIs or what. But like, <laughs> I I need some independent verification before I call this settled science. If you can't trust the cranberry society, well, then what by Jove has society come to? <laughs> cranberry society, what is previous band names for you two? Or what was the Bo Bono's first band name? Oh, uh, dear. Thank you, audience, for coming back to Science Faction's Patreon 72, where you learned all about how monkeypox may have just become an STD, how we may have found a causal mechanism and possibly preventative treatment for schizophrenia and related disorders, 
how we may have just figured out that bottlenose dolphins use special antibiotic coral to help their skin, and how a cup of cranberries can supposedly improve subject's memory, decrease bad cholesterol, and improve neural function. Thank you so much for joining us, and come on back next time for Science Faction 613. The Cranberry Society is actually a euphemism for the tart and unpleasant Irish culture. You've been listening to Science Faction. Wait, that's not right. <laughs>